Kid Icarus came out for the Famicom in Japan in late 1986, about six months after the original Metroid. And like Metroid, all of the music for the game was composed by Hirokazu Hip Tanaka, one of the pioneers of early video game music. The original Metroid soundtrack gets a lot of love and attention, deservedly so, but since Kid Icarus didn't spawn a multi-generational beloved franchise that pioneered an entire genre that still enjoys widespread popularity to this day, its soundtrack gets massively overlooked. I would say it's on par with Metroid's writing in a lot of ways. It's less atmospheric and gloomy, but more bold and adventurous, capturing the more typical style of that era's video game music that Tanaka was intentionally avoiding with his Metroid score. But rather than being straightforwardly exciting like so many game soundtracks of its day, Kid Icarus's themes weave more sentimental moments in with the heroism, elevating the soundtrack into something a little deeper than your classic fantasy music. Let's break down some of the themes from Kid Icarus and figure out exactly what makes this soundtrack take flight. Throughout the soundtrack, the music uses three main elements to sound heroic. These are the triplet-based rhythm, the tonic chord tone focused melodies, and the borrowing of chords from the parallel minor key. Mixed in among these are elements that bring a more emotional side to the music. These elements are bass pedals underpinning moving harmony, chord progressions written around scalar bass lines, and emphasizing colorful chord extensions in the melody. These two seemingly opposite approaches work beautifully together throughout the game, each one enhancing the effectiveness of the other. The best example of all of these techniques in the game is the underworld theme, which I'm deciding is the game's main theme based on how many times the melody appears throughout the rest of the game's soundtrack. The main idea of the theme is made up entirely of the notes of the tonic major triad. One, three, five. We start on the one, jump up to the three, skip one with a leap all the way down to the fifth, bounce up to the one again, and then run up the full one, three, five arpeggio. This shape is so strong that it can be moved around and inverted however you want, as we see in the second phrase. This time, starting on the fifth, we move up to the root, skip a chord tone with a leap down to the third, bounce back up to the fifth, and then move up into a triplet of chord tones that resolve to non-tonic chord tones in the next bar. This type of melody is perfect for a game like this. Emphasizing the tonic so hard and using all tonic chord tones is strong, optimistic, bold, everything you want a hero to be. The rhythms emphasize each beat without syncopation, but still give the piece a propulsion thanks to the bouncing triplet feel. It's perfect adventure game music. But listen to what happens in the second bar of the melody. This move to a G over A flat chord completely changes the tone of the composition. Really, it's an A flat diminished 7 chord, a chord built off of the tonic A flat note but with the flat 3rd, flat 5th, and double flat 7th, which is really the major 6th. On the downbeat of the bar, we land on the major 7th of the chord and then resolve to the 6th two beats later. This major 7th is a tension that resolves down to a chord tone, but for those first two beats of the bar, we're getting a G major triad over top of an A flat bass note, which is an absolutely stunning sound. As I described before, the melody is written to project strength, making it perfect for adventure game music. By contrast, using the diminished tonic chord and resolving it to the tonic major chord the way we see right after is a move usually reserved for old Disney princess music or sentimental jazz standards. Same with this major 7th to 6th resolution in the melody in bar 2. This kind of thing belongs in a love song more than the theme for the underworld. Seeing these kinds of techniques injected right into the middle of a rollicking adventure theme seems bizarre, but not only does it work, it actually elevates the composition past your typical hero music. We see the same dichotomy used in the following bars, where the driving triplets cut out and we get this bouncy scale figure leading up from the root to the fifth. It's very reminiscent of Dragon Quest's theme, isn't it? Except that this last fifth that we walked up to is slightly undercut by the harmony. The full arrangement comes charging back in on this bar with a flat 6 chord of the key, F flat major, 
and this E flat on top is acting as the colorful major seventh of that chord. This fake out is so funny to me. It seems like Tanaka was deliberately saying, Oh, Dragon Quest? Yeah, I could do that. But I'm not gonna! Again, the bouncy triplet rhythms and simple major scale melody feed into Kid Icarus's valiant half. But using the colorful major seventh as the melody note over this flat six chord change brings in the sentimental half too. The final section of the Underworld theme showcases an important technique that appears a lot in the soundtrack where the bass line walks straight down a scale, inverting several chords in the progression above it in the process. We start on a G flat 6 chord, a borrowed flat 7 from the parallel key of A flat minor, which is an adventure music staple. But then, the bass walks down to F, then E flat, then D, then D flat. Over top, the harmony is very functional and straightforward, all 4-5-1 chords except for the secondary dominant 2-7 chord, but the chords are clearly chosen to facilitate this stepwise motion in the bass, like seeing which chord tones of which chord each bass note could be after the line was already decided on. This last 4-5-1 cadence sets up another bass scale progression, as the A-flat bass note moves down to G-flat, then F, then E-flat, then D-flat, and then continues on to C, and then B-flat, before reversing chorus and walking up to set up the fifth E-flat to take us back home. Again, the harmony above is completely functional, almost entirely 4, 5, and 1 chords, but thanks to the inversions used, the progression feels much more colorful and fresh than you would ever expect from your basic building blocks of harmony. In particular, I love this A-flat add to over C chord moving down to the B-flat minor 7. It is so tasty. The Sky Palace theme uses the exact same effect, taking the first bar of the main Underworld theme and building an entirely new melody with an entirely different phrasing structure out of it. You'll immediately recognize this bass line, moving from the root to the flat seventh and continuing all the way down the scale to the second of the key, where it sets up a 2-5-1 to bring us back to the tonic. Again, this descending bass line is harmonized almost entirely by one and four chords, but moving down a scale creates a lot of momentum, and the harmony is able to ride the bass line's energy and create a progression with more depth and color than what you'd typically expect from these basic chord choices. This scale-led bass approach gives the music a sense of soft-heartedness, which adds another dimension to the music, but you can get similar results from the opposite technique that is, letting the bass sit on one note while the harmony changes over top. The title screen music ends with this extended F bass pedal, holding it down while the tenor range melody and high falling triplet arpeggio figures on top move back and forth between F major and B flat minor chords. The section ends with a 1 to flat 7 to 4 to 1 cadence, F to E flat to B flat to F, all once again playing out over this F bass pedal. The 1 to minor 4 move is the quintessential sentimental cadence, so it's no surprise that that section feels more emotional than what you typically expect from a fantasy game soundtrack. The flat 7 to 4 to 1 cadence isn't quite as emotional, but can still evoke a warmth that you wouldn't get from just a straight flat 7 to 1 cadence, say. The softer aspect of both of these cadences is enhanced by the bass pedal, which provides an anchor to the progression and gives the chords something to play off of. Moving up this D flat to E to G line in the melody sounds a lot more colorful over an F bass note than it would over a B flat, for example. 
When we resolve to that last tonic chord, it does feel like a resolution, but we also have the sense that we've been home all along. Rather than a big release from tension, it's more like a pleasant finality, a nice warm hug. All of this doesn't take away from the driving triplet rhythms and strong melodies that keep us firmly in the mode of a courageous hero. It's just that this hero is being given a warm welcome back home. The bass pedal's anchoring effect can be used to get away with some pretty dissonant note choices without damaging the basic optimistic quality that you want for this type of game. In the credits theme, we get our old underworld theme coming back over top of a C bass pedal. As we discussed, the basic shape of the theme can be moved around and inverted easily thanks to its simple triadic shape, and we see that play out here. Each bar sees this C major melody resolve to a different non-chord tone on the following bar. First, we start the melody on the root, C, and then slip down to the sharp fourth, F sharp, in the second bar. Then, we start the melody on the third and slip down to the flat seventh, B flat, on the fourth bar. Then, we start really going off the rails, modulating the melody to outline A flat, B flat, B natural, and F major triads all over a continued C bass pedal. We build into a repeating G flat over C to F over C move that builds up into an explosive climax when we finally resolve back to a straight C major chord. We can't deny the propulsion of the rhythm and shape of the melody giving a distinctly courageous feeling, but these chords are not in your typical adventure game music vocabulary. B over C, G flat over C, C diminished moving to C major. The tension we build ends up exploding into the more straightforwardly heroic section that follows, another Dragon Quest-esque melody, which feels earned after the strange, wandering path we took to get there. This combination of techniques and colors throughout the soundtrack adds up to something really special. It's like when a movie has an exciting, action-packed adventure, but also nails a thoughtful, emotional arc for the characters. When they work together, the emotional resonance and the action both make each other feel more impactful. This same synergy happens all over the Kid Icarus soundtrack, the sentimental and the bold managing to coexist while amplifying each other in a perfect yin and yang blend. This is an adventure with heart. You can get my transcription of the entire game's soundtrack on my Patreon, and if you become a supporter for any amount, even $1, you can check out the bonus bit I made to go along with this video where I go over some of the creepy themes from the game. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.